Okay, so now let's see. After train epic, train epic action, before train epic, that's all in place. After train data set, there's nothing really. Train data set action, that structure is there. Before train data set, that structure is there. All we need now is the public method to actually train the data set. So let's go ahead and put that guy in there. This is going to be the public train method. So public, this time it's going to be a bool, because I'm going to return the success or failure of training the network. Uh, train data set. Okay. <clears throat> now, similar to the train data set action here, I want to track the success of the uh, sort of child driver sequence we have going. So again, I'm going to put in a bool success set it equal to true if success even though I know that's true right now set success equal to before train data set if success success equals train data set action and finally if success success equals underscore after train data set just like that <clears throat> and then finally we will return the success flag okay so this will be visible to the user right the train data set method which will it should be blindly working exactly the way it was working before um, and in fact to make sure that we have all of this stuff working and in place let's jump back to program.cs um, and delete the word simple just like that. Save and hit F5. And there it is, working again. You can see I still have the console write lines in the nudge method. In fact, we nudged it once and then solved it. I really kind of want to look at the data, but that's not what this video is about. So at least it's working. Okay, so why do I have these? Well, <laughs> oh, this is simple network training. That's got to go. Um, why do I have these in here with underscores? because these are, the stuff that's happening in these methods is the stuff that just has to happen in order to train the network, okay? Um, but I don't have a place to sort of inject any code uh, if I want to customize the network trainer class to do something special. So what I'd like to do is put in some hook methods um, that when I subclass the network trainer class will simply be present and allow me to inject specific blocks of code that can happen and will run at uh, key stages, all right? So let's do the following. So let me collapse all of these private training methods. And let's create a new little comment here for the protected hook methods, OK? So these are all going to be of the same type. So protected virtual bool no underscore before train data set. All right. Now this really is just going to be returned true all the time. All right. And you will see that I do this again over and over. Virtual bool. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Not train data set action. That is just what it is. I'm never going to override that. But I could want to override the stuff that happens after train data set. Um, data set, just like that. We're going to return true. Similarly, protected virtual bool before train epic. Right? I want a place to put in code here. And finally, protected virtual bool after train epic. Okay, return true. All right, now these are set to protected, which means when I subclass them, um, or when I subclass the network trainer class, they're going to appear, and I'm going to be able to insert code right there. Now, I want these to be called right in the corresponding place. So for example, before train data set, I want to be called during this process when the base class is running before train data set. So initialize has to happen every time. But instead of just returning true, we're going to return before train data set. OK? 
okay? And this is without the underscore. This is the overridable hook method that's going to let you insert custom or custom code in this location. Similarly, after train data set, instead of returning true, we're going to return after train data set. And before train epic, after all of this stuff, instead of returning true, we're going to return before train epic. And finally, after train epic, instead of returning true, we're going to return after train epic, like that. All right. Now, um, let me, in fact, to illustrate this, here's what I want to do. Let me collapse this real quick. And let's subclass it just as an example. So public class my network trainer, uh, which inherits from network trainer. Okay, this should be a capital N. Um, well, let's see. First of all, we're going to need a constructor. So public my network trainer of uh, let's see, backpropagation VPN. It's going to have the same parameters and a data set uh, DS. This is going to inherit from base with the parameters VPN DS, right? So it's going to run all of that code. And in here, I have nothing special okay, that I need to add. But when I do the following, if I say protected uh, override bool, you'll see now here are my four hook methods after train data set, after train epic, before train data set, and before train epic. Okay, now I'm going to override each one of these and inject this code console.write line uh, before train data set, just like that. Now I'm going to I'm going to do the exact same thing for all four of my uh, virtual methods from the, the network trainer base class um, and they're just going to write the line and say the name of the method but I'm going to pause it real quick here because that is a waste of your time. Okay so now you should have all of this stuff in place so I just did the exact same thing protected override bool of all of the hook methods I have in place and in each one I simply will write the line that says the name of the method. Now let me run back into the network trainer class go into check nudge because I currently still have the console writes here. Um, I'm going to comment those out and in fact they're going to be left commented because this is going to be the base class. There's no reason for them to be there but I'm going to comment them because occasionally I still want to look and see. So there you have it. Also that won't clutter the example. So go back to your program and I'm going to set iterations for the, um, the network trainer to two simply to illustrate, well let me make it three. Uh, just to illustrate that the methods are being called and when they're being called, how many times they're being called, etc. So we hit F5. Oh, duh. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Instead of network trainer, call my network trainer because that is the one that I just created. Now we hit F5. Okay. So training, this is uh, right here, right? Console.writeline training. Then we call train dataset, which is the public method. During train dataset, we have a call to before train data set, which happens before all of this training junk happens. Um, and it's called only once. Now we have the iteration set to three. And you can see we have before train epic, after train epic once, again twice, and again thrice. All right, exactly three times. So before train epic is getting called beforehand, after train epic is getting called afterwards obviously and then after all of that is done I've hit my max iterations that's three I bounce out after train data set is called and then I'm done okay so I'm fairly convinced that that is working as expected so go back to your network trainer class and then we're gonna add one more uh, set of hook methods in here now during a train training of an epic there could be a reason for me to either take a look at the data I'm about to train, or uh, maybe perhaps modify it. So I'm actually going to add another one of these before after hook methods in the training of the individual epic. Okay. So let me let me create the the hooks first. So protected 
uh, virtual bool, and this is before train data point. Okay, now this one actually will have parameters. Um, I'm going to give it both the input and the output data uh, by reference. So by reference, I'm going to pass in a double array called input with capital I, and by ref, a double array called output, uh, like so. Okay, now this is just going to return true for now. And again, I'll do the exact same thing except after train data point. So let me copy that, paste it. Uh, nah, 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 nah. After train data point. Okay, now before I insert these, go back up to the data point class. I'm going to add two quick properties to this. So public uh, int input size. It's going to have a get method only, and it's going to return input dot uh, length because I just want an easy, fast way to access these lengths for a reason you will see here in a second. Public int output size. Ooh which has a get method, which will return output.length, just like so. <coughs> Excuse me. OK, so training this epic. Um, what I'm going to do is first make a local copy of the data point data. OK, so um, double array input equals new double of data set dot data of idx of i dot input size, right? The size of the input. Similarly, double array output equals new double of data set dot data of idx of i dot output size, <clears throat> just like that. OK, and then let's copy that stuff over. Array.copy from, uh, let's see, data set dot data of idx of i dot input. I'm going to copy that to input with length input length. Sorry, dot length just like that. Similarly, let's array copy data set dot data of index of i dot output into the output array, output dot length, just like so. <coughs> now, uh, let's call our new um, hook methods with this data. OK, so. Uh, before train data point by reference input by reference output. Okay. And instead of passing the data set of data of IDX dot input as input, we're going to pass in this local copy. All right. Input. I need to delete all of this. We're going to pass in by reference just output which is our local copy. And then after the fact, we're going to call after train data point with reference to the input and by reference the output. OK. I suppose these are bools, so I should probably track the success. So let me do the following. Um, bool success equals true. <coughs> Um, I guess I can kind of put this in here and success. I compiles. Apparently, that's legal. So, if blah, if success, then success equals this. Um, if I'm still successful, then Let's call the train method. If we're successful, then success equals after train data point. Okay? 
Um, I will wrap this up here in the next video.